So you know, frankly, it doesn't matter where you roam and where you travel. Sometimes at the end of the day, all you want is a plate of hot Indian food, and that's why, since we have Independence Day around the corner. You know, I thought, why not make a compilation of some of the nicest Indian food we have cooked for you on the Maria Gretti corner? Starting, of course, with the tahiri, which is filled with vegetables. So we start off the tahiri by adding some mustard oil or sarso ka tel. Now you do need a lot because you're going to be frying these vegetables. Okay. Now the thing about uh, heating mustard oil is that it first kind of smokes, and then you have to let the smoke settle, and then you add your vegetables and other spices to it. So we're just going to wait for this oil to really heat up. So our salsa ka tel is now ready, and it's nice and hot. We can cook our potatoes in it. We need to half cook these potatoes because they will anyway get cooked while they are in the rice cooker. So now that our potatoes are getting lovely golden brown, we're going to add some cauliflower to this fabulous oily equation. You know, actually, mustard oil is pretty good for health. It helps in detoxification. It is used um, basically in India. You know how we malish all our children and we shave their noses because we're really nuts. Okay, so now that our vegetables are nicely brown, and place it over a nice kitchen towel. So we're now going to start off with all our spices. We're not going to have them powdered. We use them as they are. So these are five badi elaichis, pepper, bay leaf, cinnamon sticks, and two cloves. So now that this is nice and fried, I'm going to add two onions, finely sliced. To this, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoon of garlic. Ginger, three fourth of a teaspoon of. Now that our onions are nicely browned, it's time to add half a teaspoon of red chili powder and half a teaspoon of coriander powder, quarter teaspoon of haldi, some salt. taste all gets a beautiful color so now that our spices along with our powders are nicely cooked we add to this the vegetables give this a good stir and then some peas so say one two handfuls yummy as you can use any vegetables you basically want in a tahiri but just remember to keep them nice and chunky do not break it down because when they cook in the rice cooker You know, when you bite into your tahiri, you should get nice vegetables. And like when you have, say, a biryani, and you get nice big pieces of chicken, and how you get so happy with it. The same, the same theory applies here. So my vegetables are very beautifully done. There's a lovely aroma coming here from the vegetables and all the spices that we used. Well, we're now ready to put our rice into the rice cooker. So this is how simple it is. I have soaked a cup of rice. uh in water and uh, now nicely drained it out so that it's kind of dry you put this into the rice cooker so to our one cup of rice we're going to add two cups of water so this is our second cup of water okay and now we're going to add our vegetables to this rice cooker this smells awesome very carefully just lower it We're done with this. Now cooking with a rice cooker is really simple. We add salt to taste, and we're going to give it a nice little stir so that the flavor of all the vegetables cooked mixes with the rice. So now that this is all put together, all we have to do is switch our rice cooker on. And as soon as it goes off, you're ready to eat. It's that simple. Oh, 
Oh, this is awesome. Our teri is ready. All you have to do is garnish it with some chopped coriander, and then you can bite into it. And to this, I'm going to add a little raita. So I'm going to just how I'm going to bite into this. I'm going to tell you exactly how it feels. Mmm! Oh my God, it's delicious. There's like a faint hint of the mustard oil in this, and it's absolutely divine. And the palak paneer that's filled with iron. So when I make palak paneer, I don't really add fresh cream at the end of making my palak paneer. What I actually do is put a little of the paneer into the spinach when I puree it, and that makes it really creamy and tasty. So you don't really have to add any more calories to your palak paneer. So this is it, my half kg of blanched fresh spinach. It's really really nice. and of course some of the water which you will need when you grind it and you can also add a few pieces of the paneer it makes it all the more richer and really creamy and tasty okay this is it And now we're ready to cook. I love cooking in non-stick because that way you can use less oil. So in a non-stick pan or in a normal pan, you can just put some oil, put a good amount. This must be about three tablespoons. To my oil, which is nice and hot now, I'm going to add my two onions that are nice, finely chopped. To this, I'm going to sprinkle some salt on it. I'm going to add my two chopped tomatoes to the onions. Now the tomatoes kind of slow down the cooking process. So if you want, you can raise the temperature by increasing the flame. And Arshad was having a shoot with. Uh, his uh, photographer friend Amit and they were both doing this uh, shoot for i think some film so i told them you know guys i'm going to cook you this really amazing dish and uh, they asked me what you going to make for us and i said i'm going to make for you braised crotta cheese with uh, spinach and i really toiled it because uh, i'm not very good at making indian food because i never grew up eating food like this so it takes me time for me to learn the textures and the tastes and what goes into it So I finished doing this entire thing, and then I uh, I called the boys. They were on the terrace shooting, and I said, "Okay, so uh, come and have this." And they sat on the table and they looked at the dish and said, "Oh, this is uh, palak paneer." I just felt very stupid. I couldn't believe that it's a dish that I've always heard, and I didn't know that that's what I was making because I was introduced to it as braised, you know, cottage cheese with spinach. So that's my palak paneer story. I put my ginger. Now I'm putting my garlic. and let's cook it a bit and once you can kind of smell the aroma of the garlic you put in your lal mirchi powder so now that my lal mirchi powder is in and has had quite a little swirl i'm going to go with the rest the dhania powder or the coriander powder a garam masala a tablespoon of garam masala well now it is time for us to put our haldi and last but not the least a mixed vegetable masala that is available in any market we're going to add our paneer and just toss it i don't like to fry my paneer but i like the softness in it okay it's now time to add our pureed spinach with cottage cheese and you're done now you bring this to a boil salt to taste 
and you have palak paneer. So we're ready. Our palak paneer is yummy straight out of the pan into my plate. This is lovely. My mum's prawn curry rice along with my East Indian masala. I have great memories of fish curries and prawn curries made by my grandma Rosemary in Vasai. She used to cook with her beautiful kashti sari and she used to wear these really big gold earrings that used to pull her ears right down. And she had the sweetest smile. She had wrinkles at her eyes because she was always smiling. And she used to cook on a furnace with an earthen pot. Now that kind of flavour I have never ever tasted since of course I lost her. But my mum's prawn curry is epic and I am going to try and make it today. Of course I didn't know how to make it, I have tried it many times and it does not come the way she makes it. But my dad has of course sent me the recipe written on this tiny piece of paper and the recipe reads things like half a pod of garlic, half my thumb of, uh, you know, uh, ginger. Now his thumb and my thumb are different. So when I ask my dad for recipes, my mom for recipes, they say there's no recipe, just, you know, put this and put that and... Well, I'm trying my best. For that, we're going to need some vegetable oil. Just be nice and generous with it. This is two onions and 10 garlics or half a pod of garlic. You know, I've always wanted to do this and cook. My grandma used to do this. So I'm feeling quite cool today and very grandmotherish. So basically, you have to see that this gets really, really very well fried. Okay, this is going to need some more oil. So I'm going to just go for it. It needs oil. Now I'm going to add East Indian bottle masala. Now, if you want to know how to make East Indian bottle masala, all you've got to do is click on our link. Now, this has got to be really beautifully cooked. Oh, can you smell it? No, you can't. You're just watching. But I can. Now, I'm going to cook this till I see some oil coming out of this mix. This is now ready. We can add our tomatoes to it. Tomatoes, because of the tartness in it, always slows down the process of cooking. So, always remember that before you add any kind of meat to your mix, you have to always see that your tomatoes are really well cooked. This is now getting happily cooked here. Okay, now this is beautifully done. And now we're going to go for the first extract of the coconut. This is uh, approximately one cup. So I'm going to put three fourths of this right now. Let it come to a small simmer. That's about it. I've kept some back for later. Now I'm just going to mix this in. And into this, I'm going to put half a kg prawns. Now the prawns also release their own amount of water. So all you have to do right now is gently coat the prawns with the masala that has been cooking in your pan. Just keep this for some time. I'm going to put this on a little high. Okay, so as you can see it is now kind of bubbling and the prawn is releasing its own water which is very nice. It's been about a minute. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add one and a half cup of the second extract of the coconut milk and bring this to boil. To this, I'm going to add a pinch of sugar. Always a pinch of sugar because I'm going to be adding some East Indian vinegar. And of course, at this point of time, we can add our salt. Always remember, you can always put salt in later. Do not add too much in while you're cooking. This is looking quite yum. Okay, now I'm going to bring this to a boil. That's it. It's now seven minutes. I've used medium-sized prawns. I'm just going to add to this 
half a tablespoon of East Indian vinegar. This is yummy. I'm just going to give it a little stir. And now for the end, we just use a bit of the first batch of the milk, coconut milk. Give it a final stir and it's ready to get into my mouth. Fabulous. So here it is, my plate is all set. I'm going to dig into this. Lovely. Here it is, prawn curry rice, a recipe by my mom, written by my dad, and eaten by yours truly. Hot and yum. Ah! Our lachha paratha that is ghee filled. Right now, I'm going to just show you a simple, simple roti do. So I've taken 200 grams of whole wheat flour, or as we lovingly call it, atta. To this, I'm going to add 150 ml of water. I'm going to add a little salt to taste. Right now, I will just do a roti dough for you. This dough is going to need more than 150 ml of water. You can't be measuring this. You have to feel it and go accordingly. The gluten is set free basically. And you get nice, soft, fluffy, fluffy rotis. Okay, to this now, I'm going to add a tablespoon of oil. Okay, this dough is beautifully kneaded. It's lovely, it's soft and it's ready to make fluffy, fluffy, fluffy rotis. Now to this, I'm going to add a tablespoon of ajwain, which I'm going to dry roast. The dough is all ready. Now all we have to do is cut this, make them into tiny little bowls and make our lachha parathas with this. I'm not the best roti maker in town. I always used to make funny, funny shapes of various countries. And I've decided it works. So this is done. Take some ghee. So you spread the ghee onto this. You sprinkle this with a bit of your ajwain. And then just cut into it a bit. And then roll it. Fold it a bit. So what you're actually doing is giving it a whole lot of layers. You've already put the ghee in it, so it's full of yummy desi goodness. So you keep rolling this from the ends. Fabulous. Now that this is done, all you have to do is smear it with a bit of ghee so that you can now stick it together and roll it in like a little ballerina twirling. That is it. And then for the last time, pinch it well together so nothing opens up. Don't make this too thin. Just keep it a bit thick so that you can you don't open all the layers. And it's ready. Put it onto a medium flame. Guys, my lachha paratha is done. It takes about four to five minutes. Now I'm gonna add some ghee to it before I crush it. Oof, homemade ghee is just something else. Well, this is done and you can serve this with anything you like. But I'm going to have it with my yummy mint chicken. You know, the, the thing about this is you cannot keep it. So it is from the pan into your mouth. That's the way this has got to be done. Mmm. And then of course, our five minute quickie jalebi. Isn't it all yummy? 
try it okay the first thing you start when you make a jalebi is you get the syrup ready remember that when you get the syrup ready it has to stay warm that when you put your jalebi from the fire to the syrup your syrup should be nice and warm it should not be boiling but it should just be kept warm so we're going to start with the syrup for that you're going to need one and a half cup of sugar just remember no matter how much of sugar you put into your pan you need half the amount of water so if it's one and a half cup of sugar we need three fourth cup of water you mix the two of them together you need to put it on a low flame let the sugar syrup nicely boil what we need also is half a lime okay so basically since this is like a really quick version of jalebi the batter does not take time so which is why i'll put the sugar syrup to boil first and along with that i'm going to also heat the oil so that as soon as my batter is ready i can simply make the jalebis and that's about it uh put your sugar syrup on a medium flame what i'm also going to do is that i'm going to pour the oil into a wide pan because it's easier to cook the jalebi in this so we have our sugar syrup here that's nicely sizzling we'll add a few strands of kesar to it okay the kesar gives it a nice lovely gold color and we just leave it okay i don't want to add any more color to it nothing artificial in this our sugar syrup is now done the thing is that we have to keep this warm okay you can see that the oil is now bubbling i'm going to put it on low and immediately start my batter and so to make my version of a diwali special quickie which is our jalebi for today what you need is half a cup of all purpose flour or maida uh you also need 2 teaspoons of besan or gram flour you need 1 teaspoon of corn flour just remember you need 12 teaspoons of dahi like a nice good thick consistency now you stir it all together without splashing stuff on yourself after you stir it all in just remember that if it is not the consistency that you need like you're seeing that this is a bit tough you can add water to it depending on how much you need so i will add about 1 and 1/2 tablespoon of water to this most of the time actually jalebi batter is is basically a fermented dough and it is made with yeast but i found a version that is easier so what i'm going to do is to this we're going to add 5 grams or 1 teaspoon of fruit salt Food salt is really available in the market everywhere, and basically this cuts all the trouble of jalebi making. Okay, so now that my food salt is into this batter, it's going to take me just about 30 seconds. So just look pretty for 30 seconds. I'll see you soon. So as 30 seconds are up, my batter is absolutely ready. Okay, now the easy thing is uh, making the batter. The difficult thing is actually making the jalebi. You can do it any way you feel like, as long as your jalebi looks pretty. One of the versions is to put it into a little ketchup bottle like this, and then you kind of just squeeze it over. But uh, since I'm Catholic, I will do the Catholic version, which is I will put it into an icing bag and use an icing tip. Uh, I've used a very tiny icing tip because I really like when the jalebi looks delicate. So we're going to go for this. So you take this, use a glass, turn this around like this, put this into your glass so that it. the batter does not fall out because this batter is very very it's very very loose you know all you do then is take your batter pour it into this so we're done pick this up as you see now the batter is right at the back here if you have a clip you can put a clip here at the end just so that the batter does not fall out and we are ready to be in the jalebi business and i feel like a halwai this is beautiful okay guys just make sure you don't burn it because then you will not get that beautiful gold color so yes take this a bit slow this is done this is ready it's nice and crisp all you do is now take it out put it on to a paper towel so that you take away all the excess oil So we're going to dunk our jalebis into the syrup. Okay, I do not keep my jalebis for too long in the syrup. About 2 minutes is about it. So yes, it kind of gets soaked but not too much. So it retains its crispiness, which is what I really love. So basically you're doing three things at a time. You're letting these kind of just let out all the excess of oil. You're letting this soak inside here and on one side you're making jalebis again. Here it is. 
Take it out of the syrup and into the plate. So this is it. This is my little quickie jalebi. Basically, it takes really no time. In about five minutes, you're done with it. It takes 30 seconds to make the batter, and of course, little cooking time. Um, it's a little bit of multitasking, but then that's what Indian goddesses are all about. They multitask. So if you like what we show you how to cook on the Marie Gretti Corner, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Because some things you do because you indulge me. So please do. And please note down this email address. Maria Goretti Corner at gmail.com because now we're gonna cook what you would want us to cook. So don't forget to send us the recipes that you may have collected on travels, your moms, your aunts, sometimes if your pets give you a recipe, just send it all in and we're gonna pick and choose the recipes that are really yummy and make it right here for you.